Hello, this is Jonathan Lips, Appium Project Lead, and I want to teach you how to make your own Appium 2.0 plugins. So let's build a very simple plugin together in under eight minutes. If you're not familiar with the big ideas behind Appium 2.0, I'd recommend first watching my talk from Appium Conf 2021, which you can find on YouTube. Okay, so what is an Appium 2.0 plugin? An Appium 2.0 plugin is basically a bit of software you can write in Node.js that can extend the behavior of the Appium server, including intercepting and overwriting web driver commands from a client that would normally be handled by an Appium driver. In this common case, your plugin's code would be run instead of or in addition to the driver's own code for handling that command. The feature set of a plugin is limited only by your own imagination, plus what you can do in Node.js. The internal design of a plugin can be as simple or as complex as is necessary for your use case. It has to follow a few simple rules about integrating with Appium, but that's it. Okay, now let's talk about the plugin we are going to build in our remaining time. If you ever run an Appium test on iOS, you've probably noticed that the element tag names are very verbose. And they all start with XCUI element type. Wouldn't the source look better without that prefix everywhere? So our plugin will modify the page source to normalize and remove that prefix from all tag names. Great, let's get coding. Okay, in the terminal, we'll first start an Appium server without any plugins activated yet. Then I'll start up an iOS session using Appium Inspector just to show you how the page source currently looks. Yep, here are all the XCUI element type tag names that we want to modify. Okay, in an empty terminal window, I'll navigate to my code directory and create a new directory for this project called 8-Minute Plugin. Inside this directory, I'll run npm init and answer a bunch of prompts from npm in order to create an empty npm package. I'll leave a lot of information out since it's not necessary for a project I'm never going to publish. Now I'll open up my editor and check out the package.json file, which was created by NPM. Yep, there are all our details. Back in the terminal now, we need to install and save at least one NPM dependency for this project. It's the base plugin package from the Appium NPM organization. This package is necessary because we will use it to fit our code into the format required by Appium to activate our code as a plugin. Once that's installed, I can double check that it was added to the dependencies section of our package.json file. Now we need to add one thing of our own to this file. We need to create a section here called Appium, which is a JSON object with two fields, plugin name and main class. These are required for Appium to install and work with our plugin code. So I'll set the name to 8min plugin and the main class to the name of the class that I will export from our index.js entry point for this project. Now let's create that index.js file. The first thing we need to do here is to import the base plugin class from our base plugin dependency. I'm using common JS style require here, but you could also use imports if you have your Node.js project set up that way. Next, let's create our 8min plugin class and ensure that it extends base plugin. That's what will allow Appium to use our code as a real Appium plugin. Before we implement our class, let's make sure it's exported correctly, as we had declared in our package.json file. So I'll just export it here under its own name to match what we put in the main class field earlier. OK, now let's implement our actual plugin. The basic idea is that we want our plugin to override the page source command that would normally be handled by a driver. We still need to use the driver to get the original page source, but we want to modify it before it gets back to the client. The first thing we need to do is declare which commands we want to handle in this plugin. So we fill out an array called commands in the class and list the get page source command inside of it. How did I know that this was the name of the command? All the commands that Appium knows about are listed in Appium's routes.js file, which you can find in the main Appium repository. So that is where you go when you need to figure out the name of a command. To actually handle a command, 
we need to implement an async function with the name of that command in the class. The handler takes two parameters. One is called next and one is called driver. Next is a function that when called, calls the original behavior that would have occurred had this plugin not been handling the command. And the driver parameter is of course the internal Appium object representing the active session driver. Inside this function, we can await next to get the original paid source returned by the driver. We could also have just called await driver.getPageSource, but it's better to call next if possible so that other plugins that might be active also have an opportunity to handle the command and not just yours. What we return from this function will ultimately be returned to the client or handled potentially by other active plugins. In our case, what we want to return is the page source with all instances of XCUI element type deleted to make it look simpler. So that's what we do. Now the development of our plugin is complete and it's ready to be tested in Appium. The way we install a locally developed plugin with Appium is the same as installing any other plugin, but we just use the dash dash source equals local flag and pass the local path to our plugin to the Appium plugin installed command. Once the plugin is installed, we can start up the Appium server. We need to make sure to include our plugin's name in the list of active plugins, since plugin activation is an opt-in process for Appium server admins. Once the Appium server is running with our plugin activated, we can head back to Appium Inspector and start a new iOS session to see how the page source looks. And yep, sure enough, we see our modified page source with the XCUI element type language removed. Doesn't that look nicer? Of course, we probably broke a whole lot of other functionality, including find element, since we didn't teach our plugin how to adjust element selectors for clients that are using our plugin. But now you know at least the very basics of how to start from scratch and end up with your own plugin that modifies the way the Appium server works. There's lots more to learn about plugins, including many other features you could take advantage of, and how to publish plugins for other people to find and install using Appium's plugin command line interface. Right now, the best place to find all of this information is at the Appium plugins mono repo, so check that out on GitHub. And with that coming in well under eight minutes, I'd like to say thank you for watching and learning more about Appium 2.0. You can find me at JLips on Twitter, see more of my writing about Appium at appiumpro.com, and check out the awesome Appium cloud service I work for at headspin.io. See you later.